Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome to The Polo Show. Tonight I'd like to present to you my guest. He's Otto Lewis and he's going to be telling us his story. He's a senior environment officer. He sings bass on the Freeman's Village Methodist Church Choir. And he also wants to share with us life living with disabilities. But he's not going to end his story at that point tonight. He also wants to share his plans for the future. Thank you for staying with us on The Paula Show, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Thank you for watching The Paula Show. Remember to watch The Paula Show via CTV Channel 2 on Tuesday nights at 9, and Sundays there's a rebroadcast at 1 in the afternoon. The Paula Show inspires, entertains, and transforms behavior. Like me on Facebook as well, The Paula Show. Tonight we're speaking with Atto Lewis. A very interesting conversation follows. And I am so delighted that you've accepted our invitation to the Paula Show. Thank you for having me. All right. So you know we can't shake hands and all of that. So I'll just do the football. <laughs> when I think of you, Atto, I think of a brilliant, confident, resilient gentleman. And I also think of you loving geography because I love geography as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's one of the things I've done from all the way to primary school into secondary, state college, and university. Geography at the Antigua Girls High School. Grammar school. The, well, for me, at the Antigua Girls High School, you at the Antigua Grammar School, the definition for geography, the study of the earth and its people. Uh, that was the definition we got in primary <laughs> yes, school, that foundation, yes. mixed school. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as I have come to realize, geography is more about the study of location. And sometimes... Meaning geographical location? Geographical location mm -hmm. and, 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 and movement. Mm -hmm. Once we know where something is, in mm -hmm. geography we're like, okay, why is it there? Uh, what are the factors that cause it to be there? Mm -hmm. What does it impact by being there? Mm -hmm. What are the benefits and, and, and so forth? And then when you start getting into the movement of things, is that what caused it to move? And again, what are the impacts of it moving those things? So anything you can map mm -hmm. is fair game to study in geography. I enjoy geography, but from a different perspective, I think of fascinating places to visit, and at one point I wanted to be a geologist. But it, it was just a dream because money is required for that type of study and I know my mother couldn't afford that. My husband says though that geography should be mandatory and biology as well, similar to math and English language in schools. Do um, you agree? I mean, I would love everybody to learn geography, but yeah. I know a lot of people seem to fight <laughs> against it. As for biology, I would say, at minimum, integrated science. Cause everybody, integrated yeah. science. I mean, that's, that's science, as mm -hmm. looking at science as a whole. Because it's not just biology, you have your chemistry and your physics, those things. But one of the things you do in geography is, you still have to deal with all of those aspects, as well, mm -hmm. all of those aspects of science. And even Math, all of that. You have to deal with all of that. Mm -hmm. And you also have to deal with, with social issues. Mm -hmm. Because in geography, we also have, like we're looking at cities and how cities develop and how population, uh, population and, and all those types mm -hmm. of things. So that's, that's one You're of the things with geography. You're my interest I, in I biology. I just can't you get know. bored. Well, that's the point I was going to make. You have said that if anyone has a thirst for knowledge, Geography is, is a great subject to study. It is. There's a lot of reading, though, and a lot of memorizing. Um, I think the memorizing <laughs> part is more when you're in primary school. 
and a little bit in, in secondary school when we mm -hmm. want you to remember the capital of here, the capital yeah. of here. <laughs> no, and the population. No, <laughs> Right, in, in real life, no, it is. You go to, if you go to India, you're not going to be trying to remember Delhi. And you're going to pull up the thing, okay, so where am I? Yeah. And if you have location on your phone, your phone will yeah. tell you whether you're in Hyderabad or yeah. somewhere like yeah. that. I don't know that geography is going to be excitable to everyone because I find that geography and history, you have to undertake a lot of reading. And the thing about history and geography mm -hmm. is the building blocks of it, where you the foundation of it, mm -hmm. is this first out of all these facts that you just have to learn. But like with history, because I did mm -hmm. some history courses mm -hmm. at UWE as well, it's more about the why things yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. um, though we don't do American history at UWE, mm -hmm. one of the things, if you look at Americans, those of who are from the South don't call it the Civil War. They call it the War of Northern Aggression. <laughs> They're justifying it. Everybody looks at things from their own yes, lens. Yes. I mean, even when we talk about with history, you have this thing where now you have people trying to encourage people to do what you call her, her story, you know, in gender, yes. engendering history, uh -huh. where you're looking at the things that have happened to women in mm -hmm. the past because over the years when we've written history, as someone says, history is written by the people who conquer. Yes. So since so they, they conquer, it's all about them. And presenting their side. And so because mm -hmm. society has been patriarchal most of the time, mm -hmm. you hardly heard what women went through. And sometimes the stories that women go through are very important to what happens and what we look at in because modern society. Because sometimes we play a, a supportive role to these men that have been presented as success stories. Not even about being a supportive role. Take... To shoot hard labor. Yes, I've read those books. Right. Freeman's Village. Yes, I'm from there. Freeman's Village is a Freeman's Village and quite a few of the other villages. Rich history. Were started by women getting together mm -hmm. and they, they bought the land and they started building. Mm -hmm. And it was basically the women doing it. What happened is when it came time to put on the roof. Mm -hmm. They'd wait till they see a couple of men passing and they asked them to help them put on the roof. But essentially, we built the, the villages were initially built by the women of this country. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they tell around and chose a headman to run the village. But <laughs> well, that's the problem. But you get that out of the There isn't labor. sufficient confidence in the power of us women. But it's okay. I don't know. We're I, making strides. We're making strides. Let's look at politics today. Oh, Lord. Must we go there? Go ahead. Few women are interested in being a politician. There are some who are. But over the years, from since I've been a child, the strongest supporters of any politician are the women. They're the ones who are going to show up, protest, march, help, everything. I'm going to a break. I just want to correct this misconception. Many times in Antigua and Barbuda and across the globe, people posit that women are not interested in politics. They think we are scared because we might be labeled and things about our past might be mentioned of which we are not comfortable. That is not the case. In a lot of instances, the power resides with men financially and otherwise. And they don't support women in politics as much as they support men in politics. It's a power thing. Mm -hmm. So we would love to be political candidate, candidates if we are allowed. But we need more than talk. We need people to fund the campaign. We need people to support us. We need people to have our backs just as much as they have the backs of the male politicians. And until that behavior is transformed even a little bit, women across the globe will always be at a disadvantage in the political landscape. I sound passionate is because I feel strongly about it. 
that females would make, in a lot of instances, better candidates than the males that we have available. I was wondering if that was your stump speech. Across the globe. You wondering if it's my stump speech? <laughs> Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. Geography is also about politics. A little bit of geography in everything we do every day in our lives. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay with us, please. One might think that working at the Department of the Environment, that's all that you, you know, you're concerned about. The environment. Are there other areas that impact your work? One of, the, one, of the, one of the tasks that I have, one of my main tasks at mm -hmm. the department is I manage the environmental impact assessment process. Okay. Um, this is somebody wants to build a hotel, a marina, mm -hmm. something particularly big. Yes. You apply to the Development Control Authority and the Development Control Authority will send the application over to the Department of the Environment requesting for us to give them an assessment of it. Okay. So we will look at it, look at it on a map, do a site visit, do a screening where we do a checklist and okay. ask certain things. And in that process, we're going to identify all the issues that we can. And the issues aren't just limited to environmental issues. Mm. If somebody wants to do something in a national park area, okay. we have to consider the heritage and historical aspect. Will they be destroying part of our natural or our, our history and the impact that that can that have. That has nothing to well, do with environment. Well, you see, environment, on strictest terms, you're only thinking about plants and animals and organisms and ecosystems. Mm -hmm. But environment is in one aspect. Everything in, in your sphere, that can affect you. That can affect you. So your history mm -hmm. affects you. What people, the stakeholders, the, um, the people who have their, their livelihoods, your fishermen, the people who do tours, all of those things. So there we is also, also have economics to consider, built into this? We have to consider that as well. Okay. Because if somebody made a living from, let's say, making firewood, and then you come and you're going to bulldoze all the, the, all the trees that they yeah. use, it's going to impact them. Yes, because the person no longer has a livelihood. Right, okay. so we have to sit down and we have to consider that. No, some may say this is not the best example to give from an environmental point uh -huh. of view. You know, because making firewood is destruction of trees and mm -hmm. those types of things. But, but with you every, can do it sustainably if you plant. With and every those, project, but there is going to be some destruction. As one of my teachers always used to say, yeah. you can't have development without destruction. Exactly. I was reading some documents from Alaska. And I used to think Alaska is pristine. There are issues with development in Alaska and even Hawaii. There are lots of issues with it, yeah. of development in Alaska. I mean, so, um, years ago they had a massive oil spill off of, I think it's called Prince Edward Island. Yes. In Alaska. Mm -hmm. And they're still, they're still, they're still residue. collecting yeah. residue from mm -hmm. that. Even in Alaska, because of global warming, you have a situation Very where nice. The yes. permafrost, yeah. which is the, the soil was is frozen solid, mm -hmm. is getting is melting. It's getting yeah. softer, mm -hmm. and the perm know that it's getting softer. It can't uphold, lift up. It can't carry the pipelines on it anymore. It can't carry some of the the structures either, so they're falling. And it yeah, falling the pipeline. Over cliffs. Yeah, things are falling, things are breaking, mm -hmm. and that's causing even more environmental destruction. So you deal with the environmental impact assessment mm -hmm. and whether it's positive or negative, you share information we share, with the developers. We, and we will the identify well. all the risks mm -hmm. and dependent on the risks that we identify, we're going to say to Development Control Authority, this may need an environmental, a full environmental yes. impact assessment. Or we may say, look, we're satisfied that it's not mm -hmm. that bad, or if they do a few things. When we say they have to do a few things, DCA calls that conditional approval. Yes. So mm -hmm. as long as you meet those conditions, yes. it might be you need to scale it back. Mm -hmm. It might be you need, you to, need to phase it. shift it somewhere mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. but that's how it works. That's a huge, huge responsibility. You can make or break somebody's project. Maybe. <laughs> Let, let, okay, we're speaking about the environment and local examples. Burning uh, 
waste at a landfill. That's an environmental okay. hazard. So the, I am certain, my friends, that the National Solid Waste Management <laughs> Authority will tell you, would, be, would beg me to tell you, they do not burn waste at the landfill. What do they do? You're never supposed to burn waste at a sanitary landfill. So when we see the so smoke, so when you see the smoke, it is something has gone wrong. Oh. Somebody has done something there that has caused a fire. Because it's not the norm. They're not supposed. That's not, not recommended. That's not how a sanitary landfill works. Mm -hmm. Environmental matters can help to shape public policy. So maybe even some of the recommendations you make to developers can help to shape public policy, can help to sh shape laws in Antigua and Barbuda. Well, I mean, they do. There are mm -hmm. several environmental laws that are already on the books. Mm -hmm. um, I actually yeah. recently realized they updated uh, the Beach Protection Act. Now, the Beach Protection Act, that's the one that charges people for sand mining. Mm. In the initial act, I think that was only 1984, mm -hmm. you would have to get a mining permit from the director of public works. Okay. They changed it this year, which I just found out recently, and now it's no longer the director of public works whom you have to go to. You now have to go to the director of environment. So, Is there a director of environment? Um, technically, no, but yeah. the work's going will get done anyway. Mm -hmm. They haven't appointed a technical director. Uh, uh, director. They haven't appointed anybody in that position as yet. Mm -hmm. The position only came, out, came about because of the new environmental legislation, okay. the Environmental Protection and Management Act. But even before that, we have a chief environment officer mm -hmm. who continues to function. Great Bird Island. Great Bird we Island have more is... more visitors going there now. Is a lot of people go there. It mm -hmm. is a tremendous success story across mm -hmm. the world. Um, the Antigua racer snake, which at one point we thought was completely extinct. extinct. Mm -hmm. Somebody goes over there and realizes, oh, there are a few of them. Mm -hmm. The population was really small. If my memory serves me correctly, it may have been, it was definitely less than 200. And now you How have thousands. You know? Wow. Because they're not only on Greater Bird Island, and on some of the other islands, they have, so allowed, they, they've they have allowed them to introduce them on some of the other islands. They can swim in the water? No, no, no. Well, all snakes can swim. But it is the, it's the volunteers relocated. who relocate them. Okay. Okay. But first, to relocate them, you have to get rid of the rats. And what got rid of the rats? Mongoose? No. Oh, rat. Listen. <laughs> that is one of the worst myths that still impacts us here in Antigua up to today. So you have the black Eurasian rat, and you have the Indian mongoose. And when we were, when we were in the deep into shape, um, sugar cane production, mm -hmm. somebody felt, okay, we need to get rid of these rats. Mm -hmm. And so they go and they get this mongoose to kill the rat. But the rat is nocturnal, and the, and the mongoose is a daytime person. <laughs> so while the rat is sleeping, the mongoose is up and about. And when the mongoose goes to sleep, the rat, so the rats bred anyway. The rats, rats continue to do what they do, and the mongoes prefer the snakes. Ah. And so that's why you don't find snakes on Antigua. And on Antigua because Naturally, because the mongoes okay. have already killed them, killed off all the, all the native snakes. But there are lots of bird watchers coming to Great Bird Island now. Yeah, because if you go there, you see all the lot, there's so many birds, birds. and so many different mm -hmm. types of birds that have been able to benefit from not having the rats there. Because yeah. the rats will eat the eggs, eggs and, and... Chase those. the birds. Well, it's more just eating the eggs. You eat the I eggs, know you do in all Costa Rica, they have a thriving bird-watching economy. So I'm glad that it's working out that way in Antigua and Barbuda. Then how come there are people who say, there's nothing to do in Antigua and Barbuda? They don't go around. Well, that's it. And, and that includes me too, because I've never been to Great Bird Island. I'm afraid of the sea. I'm not a sea girl at but, all. I mean, fortunately, the thing, the thing about when you go to Great Bird Island is it's, there's, a, there's a lot of coral reefs out mm -hmm. there, so the waves aren't very strong. The reefs break the yeah, waves. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly calm in there. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lovely boat ride, mm -hmm. very easy. 
okay. go to Great Bird Island, you anchor, you come You're ashore. You're convincing me. It's, 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 it's a good, it's an excellent activity. I'll try it in 2020. I'll sure? try it in 2020. Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. Senior Environment Officer Otto Lewis is here with us tonight. Coming up next, we're going to be speaking about his accident in 2008. We'll be right back after this commercial break. I want in this segment to take you to the day of the accident. It's 2008 and you're leaving your grandmother's funeral. Yeah, technically we were leaving the repast. The repast, okay. Yeah, so um, it's July 18th mm. and left the repast with a very good friend. And we actually made it all the way to um, Old Palm Road and American Road, and then we got a phone call. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back to All Saints. Oh dear. So we went back to All Saints because my brother, we had my brother's keys. Mm -hmm. Gave my brother his keys, and then we headed back out. And then we never got past Midway service station because we hit a wet and dry patch on the road, which caused the pickup to, to skid. And when we went off the road, that's when I ended up getting a spinal cord injury. Wow. Did you fall from the vehicle? No. I was inside the vehicle the whole time, although I went from facing forward to facing backward in the vehicle. It flipped? No. Just the impact of hitting did all that? Um, wow. What, I, what I've been able to piece together in, in figuring out, like I've been able to figure out at which uh -huh. point I exactly damaged my spine. Yeah. So when the pickup went off the banking, at the, you know how the road just has yes. a drop. Uh -huh. So it went off the banking. I went up, hit hit the back of yes. my head on the roof, oh. and then it went down. And from that point on, my body felt like it was floating. That was the loss of the sensation in the yeah. spine. Yeah. So I felt like I was in water, uh -huh. and. So I had no control over my body, what it was doing as we were trying to so gain control of the vehicle. And I'm also reaching to, to grab hold of stuff mm -hmm. to make certain that if we do come to a sudden stop, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to go pitching forward. So I think in, in grabbing on and the, the whole floating yeah. thing, I just ended up facing, turning around and looking at the back of the vehicle while, instead of the, looking through the front. How many occupants were in the vehicle? Two. We're in a twin cab pickup. So you and the driver. Mm -hmm. Is he badly injured as well? No, he's not injured. So he's the driver, he's not injured, and you're in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. What are your emotions? Um, you know, what bothers me is when people react to when I say he's not injured. Mm -hmm. in that a lot of people seem to think that I should have this great anger or, or a grudge and animosity yeah. against him. Uh -huh. um, I could put it this way. You have your kids. If you were driving with your kids and you get into an accident, um, should they have anger and animosity against you? Mm. I wouldn't want them to. And, and so, and I mean, the other thing that bothers me about it is we, we like to call ourselves a Christian nature. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so what is Christian about me wanting to feel, about me wanting the other person who is there with me, so the two of us to be in, in, in a very bad situation? Um, this is somebody who, who I have known my entire life. So it's not somebody who will deliberately endanger your life? Well, we weren't even driving fast, actually. Mm -hmm. We were discussing me, uh, me being a godfather to, to his child. And that's what happened at the point of the accident. So, you know, and I would also say that, yes, I have the one, I'm the one with the physical injury. Mm -hmm. But he's the one who, and I, I know him very well, who has to deal with it mentally and emotionally. That, that, that's, that injury is probably even worse than mine. Mm -hmm. And he's still a close friend? Always. Mm. But I'm glad that you're not bitter. I'm glad that you've forgiven. 
Because at the end of the day, this optimism is what can help you to get that miracle that you need or even a technological breakthrough. So you have to prepare yourself for that. Initially, you had caretakers, and you said that you, you, you didn't have control so from your chest down. Right after the accident, I basically lost all the muscle from here go down. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't do a lot of things for myself. I couldn't open a bottle of water. The first time I sat in the wheelchair, I couldn't move it on my own. Mm. Even in terms of sitting in the wheelchair, if I didn't have my, my arms on the, mm -hmm. on the arm, armrest, I'd be sinking down in the wheelchair. Mm. And that was just from the loss of control of all, the, all those things, mm -hmm. all those muscles that we take for granted the every day that we mm -hmm. live. And, and, but now you can do more than open a bottle of water. You can push yourself around. You're almost self-sufficient. The only thing I don't do currently is, is drive. Oh. I, live, I live in a house by myself. Mm -hmm. I cook, I clean. Wash. Well, the, the laundry machine is, is that <laughs> one. Is, is you hang the clothes? I, 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 don't, I don't go to the laundry machine, but I, I could do that if I, if if I needed to. If you have to, you wash yourself, but everything, or you need help in that way. I do all of that myself. Oh. But then, what would one call your condition? A person living with disability, because you seem to be at a higher level than other persons with disabilities. Are they described in you know, on levels or ranges? Okay, there's a, there are technical definitions. Mm -hmm. um, at, the time when I, at the time when I had the accident, I was, what they do, they do an assessment of hand strength and those types of things and, mm -hmm. and dexterity. And I got zero Ooh. one thing and, and that, so technically at that point in time, I was what's called a quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. So all four limbs. Yes. Um, as, as time has progressed mm -hmm. and I've gotten stronger um, that I can use my hands, I can lift things, I can mm -hmm. do whatever I want with them. Yeah. So then at one point become a paraplegic mm -hmm. but it's, it's just the legs. Yeah. Um, and even then my legs, I can move them a little bit, I, you know, not enough to stand and not enough, not but enough you to walk. I have in feeling life. in them, mm -hmm. but I've always had feeling in them. In mm -hmm. fact, right after the accident, driver says to me, Ado, are you okay? And I say, hold on, let me check. <laughs> and I start to do my own evaluation. So first I move my head, then I move my shoulders. I could move my arms, I move my torso, move my hips. And I tried to move my legs, and I couldn't move my legs. Oh. So then I started doing this, and I did this. I said, okay. I could feel when I touched my legs. Mm -hmm. But the, the feeling was a little bit different in that it felt like there was tingling. There was a tingling yes. sensation like no. that, that, yeah. that remained, mm -hmm. that trailed where I would, would rub my hand. Mm -hmm. And have you tried maybe like to hold on to maybe crutches, some object and walk and it's mm. just that the feet won't No, um right now that won't that one won't you need to do crutches and mm -hmm. you you need to be able to like one of the problems I have is right is I can't get my legs fully extended. Okay. Because the my hamstrings mm -hmm. have strength in the back faster than the other muscles in my legs. Oh. So my legs don't like to straighten out, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to stand with your legs straight and, and load, mm -hmm. load the weight on the bones, because mm -hmm. that's how you stand up. Yeah. Actually just loading the weight on the bones. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't st stretch out your legs, you can't stand up. Yeah. But that's the reason I continue to go to physiotherapy, because mm -hmm. that's something we have to keep working yeah. on. You said, it's just my legs. I can still do a lot of things. And after visiting a home in Trinidad, you realize that well, you can make it. No, it's, 
That sounds as if I went to the home in Trinidad after the accident. No, but after remembering your experience. My experiences all over, the traveling, the, when I went to Trinidad uh, as a teenager, mm -hmm. um, visiting a home for, for children who who had basically been abandoned, some were mm -hmm. orphans, abandoned because they're born with HIV, AIDS, mm -hmm. or they have some form of disability. And you see peop some people who have disabilities, born with disabilities, just living, mm -hmm. thriving, doing everything that they can. And you realize, okay, in one aspect, yes, I can't walk, I can't, I can't go and dance like I used to go and dance mm -hmm. and those types and of things. Drive, yeah. But you know what? You can still live. There's yes. so many things that you can still do. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I still do a lot of things. I still go to church. I still sing on the choir. I go to work. My friends come over and we, we, we lie until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning if that's mm -hmm. what we want to do. So, you know, There's life. life is still there. Yeah. I've traveled. I mean, granted, the reason that I have had to travel is not, not the reason I wanted to travel. Yes. But I have traveled and spent time with the majority of my family. Mm -hmm. And so life continues. And you don't need to be held back by anything as long as you take that step. Yeah. Pardon the expression. And <laughs> keep going. So you would say that your experiences before the accident and your experiences after the accident shapes your perspective now. They do. To look optimistically into the they future. Do. I mean, yeah. there's so many things that happen in this yeah. world. Yeah. You know, um, tomorrow if somebody comes up with a stem cell cure or they if it's it. if it's some top of electronic chip. electronic chip or even if, it, if it's just a mechanical walker, I could... Or a miracle. Or just continue doing, doing what I'm doing until everything heals up itself. Very well. Thank you for staying with us on The Paula Show. Tonight we're speaking with Atto Lewis. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay with us, please. You said you clean, cook, do your own personal care. You just need help with transportation. So who has been helping you for all these years? Mom? Most of, well, initially I used to go around in the mm -hmm. wheelchair service van. Yes. And then once I got strong enough to do my own transfers, mm -hmm. I went around in the car with my mom. Um, so normally- When you say transfers? Transfers is, is when you lift yourself from car to from wheelchair to bed, wheelchair to car, car to wheelchair. You just transfer, transfer across. Have you fallen? Um, I've fallen, not necessarily during the transfer. Sometimes during the transfer, but yeah, I've fallen a couple of times. And you've hurt yourself? No. Not? <sighs> what, you never fell down? Yeah. <laughs> I fell in town the other day. And it was so embarrassing. Well, so when you fall, you're embarrassed as well. Who isn't? <laughs> if, if anybody's around, you have to be embarrassed. And the only thing with being in a wheelchair is when you fall, um, if, if, you, if you can't put yourself back up in your wheelchair and reset, you you're, you're going to need help to do it. Ay, ay, ay. Mm -mm -mm. Wheelchair access. I see people in St. John's trying to maneuver themselves, I visitors and locals far. alike. You don't go to town. I keep far, far, far away from St. John's. But how do you get anything done that you might have to do personally? You know, um, so sometimes I'll go shopping, um, but obviously I have to go shopping somewhere where it has access. Mm -hmm. So I stick to what I will do anywhere I have to go. Mm -hmm. I will ask a family member or a good friend okay. to go and check it out if I haven't been there before. I do a site survey to make sure. Wow. Yeah, they're going to go. They're going to determine, okay, um, is it fully accessible, partially mm -hmm. accessible? If we need to do something special to get there, mm -hmm. and then they will come back and we'll, we'll decide what we have to do. One of the things that I have not been able to do is get an updated social security card. And why is that? 
because the building that they use at the top of the corner of Long Street uh, is not accessible. You have the gutter and you have steps, so I just can't get into the so building. So they can't to come take. and offer you the services to your location. You have to go to the office. That's what I have been told. So I mean, I don't know how many other persons in 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 wheelchairs or have other disabilities have problems getting there, but I mean. One of the things we need to realize here mm -hmm. in Antigua and Barbuda is, and particularly if we want to continue practicing tourism. Yeah. A few months ago, I, I listened to one of the tourism officers doing an interview on the radio, and they said that the main target group we have are the baby boomers. Mm, no, people with the money. Baby boomers, at this point in time, are people who are between 60 and 77 years mm -hmm. old. And when you go to the American American Disabilities site, they will yeah. tell you at least 50% of them have at least one handicap. But they also have a disposable income. Those are the ones with the income. Yes. Those are the ones mm -hmm. with the time. Mm -hmm. So if we want to, to really practice tourism, we have to be able to, have, to deal with people who have handicaps. Yes. And, and the other thing about it too, I mean, when you start interacting with persons with disabilities, if you have them in your family, you're close to them, mm -hmm. it changes your perspective. That's true. So if you realize this country is inaccessible, this business is inaccessible, too challenging. and they're not mm -hmm. making any attempt to become accessible, you're going to be like, well, you don't need to give them your business. Yes. And you will encourage people not to go there as well. That's true. Because it's a challenge. It's a, it's a challenge. And the thing about it is, if you, you're with your family, mm -hmm. you want to be able to go everywhere with your family. Feel like, everywhere with yeah. your friends. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go somewhere and one of your family members has to be outside or can't participate. Or because staying with you at the hotel or on the ship because you're not able to use your wheelchair comfortably to access and where they'd like to go. And, and the way the world is, no. I mean, the, everybody is expecting people to be more yes. accessible, more inclusive, mm -hmm. and everything. So if, if you think you can go by without doing it, <laughs> you're going but to get... But it's also customer service. I mean, apart from it being global, a, a global standard to have wheelchair access, it also could be a competitive advantage for a business if you're thinking of elevating your customer service and you have access for persons with disabilities. It is. I, yeah. would, also, I would also say to anybody, mm -hmm. if it, any people who, who, are, who are in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. people who have certain levels of disability, their costs of living are higher. They have to spend more money on, to do things than other people. So, so the business makes more money. If, if, if you're looking to get your economics <laughs> on par, you, you want to get <laughs> the persons with disabilities. Increasing your profit. You want the persons with disabilities <laughs> to be able to use Because they're going to it. spend more. Because look, if I travel, I am not traveling alone. Yes. You need to be a company. Walk, I'm walking with somebody. Mm -hmm. Probably going to walk with two, maybe three. So, instead of one, it's four. Who does which hotelier wants one when they can have four? None, absolutely none, especially in these hard times. How many wheelchairs do you have? Mm. I've heard that the venue I have, dictates I have, the wheelchair. I have, in some I have cases. three currently. Yeah. Firstly, yeah. anything goes wrong with one. Oh. Puncture, it's, a broken it's, it's, piece. Right. You, you want to have another. You need one. to have another one. You need at least. You need to have at least two wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I have three is really because some some friends from church, mm -hmm. they who have family in in, in the states, mm -hmm. they decided they somebody they knew had a wheelchair and they weren't using it and so they decided mm -hmm. to send it. So that's how come I have three and not just two. Mm -hmm. um, also, but you would advise anybody who has to use wheelchair to, have to, to move around to at least have, to to. have at least two. To sh you mm -hmm. should have at least two because mm -hmm. anything goes wrong, mm -hmm. you're going to have to find the time to. You're going to have to find a wheelchair somewhere. 
Do you and have wheelchairs have? aren't that easy to, to get by. Wheelchairs need to fit you properly right. and, and those types of things. Do you have to choose wheelchairs according to, let's say, the surface, pavement, gravel, asphalt, grass? Um, well, okay, so you do have wheelchairs that mm -hmm. are specially designed for, for mm -hmm. those types of things. Normally, you, you, I will just choose a wheelchair that can take a little bit of off, off pavement, mm -hmm. not too much. Because mm -hmm. uh, what you find is once they hit grass, mm -hmm. you can barely move. You can barely push the right. wheelchair yourself. At that point in time, I have to tell somebody, just turn the wheelchair backwards and just pull me mm -hmm. wherever I need to go. Mm -hmm. It's the fastest way to get there. Okay. Um, if you go to the beach, that's sand. another issue. Sand going to be sinking in the sand. Mm. You know, and the love lifted you is not the kind of thing you want at that point <laughs> in time. Uh, so, so there is that mm -hmm. aspect of it. But you try here in Antigua because of the way things are. Yeah. You try to get a wheelchair that can take just a little bit of the rough, the rough road. Mm. Not too much, but just a little bit. Just, just sufficient. Whoa. I do. Just talking with you, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, how could I do this? How it, it takes an extra level of strength to be this comfortable in this position, does it? Um, and you don't want pity, right? It takes, it takes a good family. It takes a good family. It takes a good family. Mm -hmm. Whether it's your blood family or, or, or your, the, the yeah. people who you just consider support. to be really close yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. You need the support. Yeah. Um, if you have a good family around you, there's hardly anything you can't do. Yeah. Um, pity, I don't need pity. Pity is not going to help me. So I don't need it, I don't want it. I want to be respected. Mm -hmm. I want to be given a fair chance to do whatever I choose to do. Yeah. Um, but pity no. PhD for the future. You've done the bachelor's, the master's, unless you're going to do a double master's. <sighs> you know, <laughs> anything is possible. Um, <laughs> Don't keep me in suspense. Tell me, PhD. Anything is possible. You know, they, I have options. Yes. I have options, uh, you know, there is a possible, at one point I used to think anybody mm -hmm. who did a double master's had too, many time, too much time on their hands. I want to do another master's. I, I used to think that uh -huh. and, you know, life has changed my, yeah. my perspective. So you'll do one? Maybe. Depending on Maybe. the circumstances. Maybe. You know, I've, I've considered it. You're not totally against it. I'm not against it anymore. <laughs> I'm not against it anymore. You know, sometimes in, in your work, you, you come across areas yeah. that you feel, look, I, I would like to know a little bit more yeah. about this. Or I'd like to learn a little bit more about yeah. that. And so, yeah. So it yeah. won't be geography again then? No. Okay. I mean, maybe for a PhD with geography, because yeah. it's geography brought me to the dance. Yes. You know, but so, not a double master. But in, I couldn't. I couldn't do a, a no, second master in sustainable international. And, yeah. No, not in geography. I didn't know. Something I mean, else. What about renewable energy? The geography skills will come into play no matter what. What about renewable energies? That's a that's a huge <sighs> one. It is. I mean, the thing with renewable energies, and it's it's very interesting. It's really yes. important. Um, is a one, of, one of the things when I was doing my master's mm -hmm. and it, we had there's a course in renewable energies that mm -hmm. we do at Brandeis and you know I said what keeps people from wholeheartedly going into renewable energy is the average man yeah. wants to feel like nothing changed he doesn't want to be inconvenienced so if to get your solar panels and those types of things and to get your, your renewable energy to work. Mm -hmm. You feel that you have to put too yourself out. Too much effort. Even though it may not be, the, I mean, it, it could be a little bit, but it mm -hmm. can't be too much. People, people are going to resist it. Shy away from it. Although in mm -hmm. some things like the, the, the electric cars, for example. You like those? 
here in Antigua, in mm -hmm. small island states, mm -hmm. electric cars should be the go-to car. Mm. Because you can charge, the charge lasts for several days. You can go all over the island several times on one charge. On and one charge? On one charge. Because you know if it's a situation where we need frequent charging, yeah, it's you're going not to be a problem. Going, you're not <laughs> going to run out of energy I'm going just from St. John's to Freetown and back. Mm -hmm. You can do that several times in, in an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. And because whether you're charging it by the sun or you, you plug it in, look, you can have it set up that way at night time when you're home. You plug it's it in. Charging. You plug it in like you plug in your TV. But you know what? We're talking about the future. And the future is now. So I'm sure in another year or two, we'll be seeing multiple users with electric cars. Well, you don't think? the problem we have here is that although we've, there's, there's no duty mm -hmm. on electric vehicles, there's kind of no duty on any vehicles. <laughs> so if you're going to bring in a, a cheap second hand from somewhere yeah. compared to a, a brand new, a brand new electric, electric even just a brand new normal yeah. combustion engine vehicle mm -hmm. you know the cost yeah, is when the you cost. weigh them the cost although the savings you get from not having to buy gas mm -hmm. will put you We'll, we'll Eventually, it will but even out. People, some people don't like looking that We have that to change the ahead. mindset. It's a mindset we have to change. What are you thinking? Studying online or in a traditional classroom? I'm definitely a traditional classroom girl. I love the classroom. I love the interaction. I, l I love being able to, to yes. argue points Networking, with people. Networking, yeah. But at this point in time, it would probably be online. I've done a few online courses. Mm -hmm. um, did a project, man project management one with mm -hmm. the Inter-American Development Bank. I've done a disaster assessment one with the World Bank. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not as exciting <laughs> as a, but it's, it's, it's good enough. You said a positive outlook on life goes a long way. It's yes. contagious. I like that. It is. It certainly is. I mean, you around somebody, if, if the person is always gloomy, mm -hmm. always complaining, mm -hmm. uh, you don't mm -hmm. want to be around them. But if you're around that person who smiles, you're around that person who can, even in the hardest of circumstances, can mm -hmm. crack a joke. Yeah. You know, it, it makes life different. It makes you want to get up in the morning and keep going. Mm -hmm. it, when you're feeling that you've reached that end of the day, close to the end of the day, where you're about to just give up because you're ready to mm -hmm. drop down, that person who can put a smile on your face, who can mm -hmm. make you laugh, who can, who can give you that, 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 extra, that extra push, mm -hmm. will get you over the finish line every time. Yeah. Franklin Roosevelt, former US president, he had a disability at times. He was in a wheelchair as well. He suffered from polio. Suffered from polio. And he was the president of the United States. Anything is possible in this life. Anything. I mean, look, for years we all have been looking at Stephen Hawkins in his wheelchair and, mm -hmm. and, and as one of the smartest human beings mm -hmm. on the face of the earth. So a disability is... Mm -hmm. is, is should only be a slight inconvenience if you have the access to do whatever you need to do. And we need to pay more attention to persons with disabilities. We do. Provide for them so that they can be more self-sufficient. I, I mean, look, there are some who, the, 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 in the spectrum of disability, mm -hmm. will not be able to. Mm -hmm. But for those who can, you have to give them, give them their opportunity to shine. Barack Obama says, hope is that thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us if we have the courage to reach for it and to work for it and to fight for it. Do you agree? I agree. Well, Atuluis, 
Thank you very much for coming to the Polish show. We enjoyed you thoroughly, and I'm sure my audience will equally enjoy you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. And good night. Foot bomb. <laughs> Foot bomb. <laughs> Our life has been transformed to some degree in Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you for staying with us on The Paula Show and have a good evening. Goodbye.